good to have you guys back. I don't know if I announced this or not last week, but, but uh, Bob and Sammy here, we did, I did their wedding here a few weeks ago, and uh, Sammy is expecting, did I say that? Yes. <laughs> so give her a hand. And she's so fun to tease because she turns red so easy. <laughs> so, how is everybody? Good? Jackie. How's Jackie? Well, I was telling everybody else, uh, she's doing good. She was, she's up walking and doing the 100-yard dash and the marathon and things like that. You know, no, not really. She's not that far along. But um, they gave her some pills to take for the pain and all that kind of stuff. You know, and she's supposed to take those five days. And then last night, she's supposed to switch over and take some other ones. And so she took one before she went to bed. And she woke up with hives and... and uh, um, yeah, and itching and upset stomach and all that kind of stuff, you know, lips kind of puffed up and kind of hard to talk, you know. <laughs> so, so anyway, she's got to call the doctor this morning, get stuff all, you know, counteracted and give her, you know, 20 cc's of teramycin, she'll be all right, you know, run her through the chute. <laughs> so anyway, but her foot is getting better, so she's planning on coming back to work on Tuesday, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, anyway, that song is, is, you know, who am I? We are, how, how many believe that we are saved by grace and grace alone? I mean, that's it. That's all, that's God's plan is his grace. It's not anything that we do in ourselves, right? It is everything that he has done. Amen? In Ephesians 2, it says this. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Right? So, would you all agree then, everything is done out of grace, not works? Would you agree to that? Okay? So, all right. So, in, in Romans eleven six, then, it says this. It says, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is of no longer grace. But if, but if it is of works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. Now, if you read that kind of fast, it's kind of like, what in the heck did that just say? So the Amplified kind of says it like this. It kind of breaks it down so you can actually understand it. But if it is by grace, his unmerited favor and graciousness... It is no longer conditioned on works or anything men have done. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. It would be meaningless. Okay? So everything, God's operation is out of his grace and what Jesus has accomplished at the cross. Correct? Okay. So now, let's go to this next verse. Because we're still talking about speech. Okay? We're still talking about what we speak, and all this kind of stuff. But let's go to this next verse, and I want to show you something here. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, this has been taught that if you can believe, Bob, then you're going to get your miracle. But if you can't believe, sorry, you ain't going to get it. Is that how it's been taught? If you can believe, then if you... I want, you, I want you to, the subliminal message here. If you can believe, then you'll get your miracle. Now, who's that dependent upon? Grace or works? If you can believe, if you can do it, then it's conditional. Right? If you can believe, then it'll happen. But if you can't believe, it ain't going to happen. So, it has been taught then that if you can believe... Bev, then you'll get your miracle. But you just don't have enough faith. So you've got to have more faith. You've got to have this and you've got to have that. Wanda's shaking her head no. She's disagreeing with me. <laughs> and she's right. <laughs> okay? So, so what's wrong with this picture then? So if you, if you take the Greek, if you take the, and, and look at it in the Greek, Okay, because this is, this is what the New Testament is. is. It's written in the Greek. And I truly believe, I truly believe this with all my heart, that the actual New, Te New Testament was written in Hebrew. But they've, those, those scriptures were destroyed. There is, there, they have found Hebrew scriptures of Matthew, but that's it. 
They haven't found any more. So if you could actually take and read it in the Hebrew, I bet it would mean a whole lot more. There's a lot more meaning in it, okay? But like I said, this has traditionally been taught that if you can believe, then you'll have your miracle. If you can't believe, it ain't going to happen. So that is works because it's depending upon your belief. But if you take, like I said, the Greek, it says it like this. Can you believe that all things are possible to him? Can you believe all things are possible to him, Jesus, okay, who is always believing? In the actual Greek, it says this. If you are able to believe, all able to the one believing. Okay, if you are able to believe, all is able to the one believing. That's not about you. That's about Jesus. Now, let's, take, let's go to the next one in New Kings James and go back to the one that we were just at. I want, you, I want to show you something. Okay, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him. Look at him, okay? Look at him. Now, let's go to the next scripture. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to who? Jesus, who believes. So, now, all things are possible for Jesus. Is that correct? Okay, so now this, this takes a load off of you. So it's not a, dependent upon your faith. It's dependent upon your trust in him. Your trust in him who is all believing. Okay? So instead of my faith for the miracle, I'm speaking my miracle. I'm speaking my, my healing. I'm speaking my deliverance. I'm speaking my, my provision. Okay, that's good. That's good. But we have to keep focus on who the author of that is. And that would be who? Jesus is my provision. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my provider. You know, all that. Okay? He is my deliverance. So keep your eyes fixed on him who is always believing. So if I can trust then that by his stripes we are healed, I'm trusting him that he did that. Okay? So it's not about your faith. Because otherwise, then, if it was about your faith... It would be works. Okay? So now this next scripture makes much more sense in Hebrews 12. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Okay? So does that make more sense? Now, when you read that, is it up to your faith or his? He's the author and finisher of your faith. You see? He plants the thought in your mind to put a spider in my truck. <laughs> I knew who did it. <laughs> I was going to bring it, but I didn't bring the truck because it's still sitting on the seat. I, I left him there. He's a little pet. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> so anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the author and <laughs> finisher of our faith. So he puts the thought in your head. He puts a thought, the Holy Spirit. See, that's the leading of the Holy Spirit. You're led by the Spirit. So when he tells you to do something, then you go ahead and do it. Okay? And if you're living in faith, then you are being led by the Spirit, and everything's going to work out just fine. Okay? Because you're being led by him. So he's the author. He puts it in your mind. He's the finisher. In other words, he's going to accomplish it. Okay, so let's go to the next one then. In the, in the uh, good news, it says, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus on whom our trust depends from beginning to end. Okay, so let's not, let's not, let's not give up from beginning to end. Let's, let's stay in rest because if, if my faith, if it's dependent upon your faith, it's like, it's kind of like getting ready for the 100-yard dash. <sighs> okay, I got to get ready for this. I got faith. Yep, I can do this, you know. But if it's dependent upon him, I can sit back and rest. You see? Sit, because it says, doesn't it say, labor to enter into the rest? 
labor to enter into that rest. So anytime you're taking communion or anything you're doing, praying, don't feel like there's a demand on you, okay? Don't feel a demand that it's up to you. If I don't pray, if I don't do this right, if I don't say it right, whoops, I didn't say it right, you know, then I'm going to mess it up. No, God knows your heart, okay? Just trust him that he will do what he says he'll do, leaning on him, okay? So now I'm going to take you on a little journey here. Let's go to Matthew 16. It says, how is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread. Now he's talking about communion and all this stuff. But to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay? When Jesus came into the uh, region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who am I? Okay, now, I look at these scriptures, and I, I'm thinking about this. Okay, so why didn't he just say this? Why didn't the Bible just say, he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then he said to his disciples, saying, who do men say that I am? Why did he put that in there about going into this other region? What's that got to do with it? Who cares? Who cares what that means? What, what does that actually mean? Because some, the, everything's put in there for a reason. Okay? So, in the Hebrew, let's see what this means. In the Hebrew, it means this. Caesarea. Coming aware of the open hand and leaning on Jesus is the door to the power and might of grace. So, Grace is unmerited favor. Is that true? Okay. So when I start to lean on him, then his unmerited favor is upon me. Okay. His, his favor is on you all the time. It's just you leaning on him, trusting him to do it, what he says he'll do. So now Philippi means this, speaking mightily, learning of the power of speech. We've been talking about that, speaking words. Speaking mightily, learning of the power of speech that connects rest with leaning upon him. So when you start to speak the word, what are you doing? When I speak the word, the power of my speech connects me to rest because I'm leaning on him. You see what that does? When you start to speak things, what are you doing? You are leaning on him, trusting him. When you start to speak the word, by your stripes, Lord, I am healed. What are you doing? You are leaning on him, resting in him. Okay? You are resting and leaning on him. So when you're speaking words, because it says that, that I can't remember the scripture, it does say this, but it talks about speaking into existence, okay? Who does that, me or him? Can you speak the world into existence? No, I can't either. But when I'm speaking it, I am leaning on him and trusting on him. Does that make sense to you? I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> Okay. Yes. He didn't tell me to speak to him about the storm. He told me he speaks to the storm. Okay. So I set out my mouth. I commanded the storm to stop. The minute I did that, the tomatoes went back. They went up, back up in the sky. So what happened there? Holy Spirit prompted you. To speak okay so you did what the Holy Spirit told you to do you spoke okay and when you spoke you were trusting him that he would do it right because 
Okay, so when someone comes up for healing, like the day that Jackie came up and her back went da 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 you know, you could hear it popping. Okay, that day I felt absolutely zero zilch, nothing, niente. And I think God did that for a reason, to show me that it is, there's nothing in me. I am not the anointed one. He is. Okay? And she was sitting there, and it's like, okay, so now I'll pray for you, Bev. I'll pray for you, okay, for healing or whatever, you know. Lucille, I'll pray for you. That doesn't put much responsibility on me, you see. But when someone comes forth and needs prayer, uh-oh, what if this don't work, you see? But when God tells you to pray for someone, that's why I don't, that's why I don't, I pray for a lot of people, okay? Because a lot of times in churches, there's this big facade and there's this big show, okay? And there's such f fakeness, you know? And I've seen ministries that produce these healings and, oh, they fall over backwards and they slain in the spirit. And I was in a church and you guys have been there too. I'll tell you what it is later. But anyway, everybody was slain in the spirit and they would all fall down, you know, like dominoes. I mean, I was sitting there and it's like, I feel absolutely nothing. This is just a big show. It's a big circus is all it is, you know. But when God tells you, like he told you, and he told me, he said, have her come up. And I did. I told her to come up and we'll pray. And you guys came up that day and we prayed and we, you didn't feel nothing, I didn't feel nothing, but you said you, her back, I could hear it just going tunk, 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 and it worked. Why did that do that? Because God told me to do something. God told you, Bob, to do something. And he's the author and finisher of our faith. He did it. Not me. Not anything in me. Because I didn't feel nothing. You know? So, but when God tells you to do it, it's going to work if you're obedient. It's like that one scripture in Luke. It says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I tell you to do? Hmm. I think it's Luke 6 something. But he says, why, why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why do you call me Lord? What, who's your Lord? Jesus. Well, why do you call me that if you don't do what I tell you to do? I'm telling you to do something. I'm telling you to call the storm, to calm the storm. Why do you call me Lord if you don't do what I tell you to do? <laughs> you know? So, when he prompts you to do something, don't second guess it. Jump in with both feet and do it. Okay? All right. So, where are we at now? Oh, in Hebrews. Hebrews 4. It says this. It says, God's promises of entering his rest still stand, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news... What's the good news? It's the gospel, the gospel of grace, okay? For this grace that God has prepared, th his, this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. You see, I'm going to enter his rest. He told you to calm the storm. So did you feel any pressure if it didn't work? Didn't even, you didn't even think about it, did you? Didn't even think that it wouldn't work. He just told you to do something, and you did it. It was just a reaction. It's kind of like if you uh, touch electric fence, what's your natural reaction? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, that's the natural reaction, <laughs> okay? So you did it, boom, you, or he told it, you just did it. Just boom, okay? So there was no pressure on you, okay? Jackie came up. There was no pressure on me because I definitely didn't feel nothing. If it don't work, <laughs> it ain't going to work, you know? But when God tells you, to, when God does not tell you to do something and you go ahead and do it and it don't work, then you make, you're made an idiot, okay? Like a lot of these ministries, you know, that all looks good and fine and fancy. Oh, they got such a healing ministry and they do this and they do that. But when it comes down to it, when it boils down to it, the truth shall be shouted from the rooftops. It's all found out that it's not, some of it isn't all true. Now, there are those that do good, okay? I'm not saying that there isn't. I'm not saying that there isn't healing ministries. I'm just saying that make, let God tell you to do things, okay? All right. So, in the message, it says this. It says, for as long then as that promise of resting in him 
pulls us onto God's goal for us. God has a goal for you, right? His goal would be healing, okay? So when we rest in him, let's, let's look at the physical. If you're sick, what, do you, what, what's, what's the, what is your body usually telling you to do? Rest, right? If you're, if you're not feeling well, your body's telling you you're tired. Man, you just don't want to, your eyes don't want to open, you know? You can try, but it's like, oh man, I've had it. I'm done. I'm, I got to rest, you know? So what happens during that rest? Your body restores and rejuvenates itself, okay? Every night when you go to sleep, your body is restoring and rejuvenating, okay? It's hard for Delane because she's up 24-7. <laughs> she works seven days a week. Okay. But so that in the physical, rest is restoration. Okay. So in the spiritual, when we rest in him, what would that be? Restoration. See, we're not all geared up. Okay. Um, sometimes when you hear from God, it is a, it's not, be, you're maybe not even thinking about God, but all of a sudden, boom, he, he hits you with something. You're not even thinking about it. Bam. See, you were, your mind is at rest, or if you're in a state of, let's say a state of prayer, how many pray on a normal basis? Okay. Is there, you know, I don't know how you pray, what you do, but I try to get a time where I can have quiet. Okay, my best time is like when everybody else is in bed, you know, early in the morning, because it's it's quiet and I don't I don't have, you know. Talking, because you just can't concentrate, right? So, but during that time of of meditation or prayer, there's a time when you, you know there's a time that you should just not be talking all the time. It's kind of like I can't God can't get a word in edgeway uh, because you're constantly talking. You know, be quiet. You know, so set back and rest and without trying to fall asleep, okay? <laughs> but put your focus on him and let him speak to you. And he will speak to you, okay? That's time of rest. And he will speak. If you're all geared up, it's hard for him to speak to you when you're all geared up and, and ramming and going, okay? It's hard to listen to God when you're all revved up, okay? It's hard for you to be calm if you're angry, you know. If, if you see a spider in your seat, it's hard to be calm. Because <laughs> you just got spooked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's, let's move on. I want to show you some more. So faith then is trusting in God. Is that correct? So lack of trusting in God would be doubting God, right? So now let's look at this. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son to you uh, so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever his, uh, this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the devil, or the, excuse me, cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. So, but now here, here's, a, here, here's something I want you to look at. Before this, he gave them authority to cast out, go to Luke 10, 19. It says this. It says, I have, behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So they had the authority to cast out the evil spirit, didn't they? But they couldn't do it. Well, brother, you know, and I've heard a hundred different excuses why they couldn't do it. Well, it's because they didn't pray enough. It was because they didn't fast enough. And they didn't tie their shoelaces right. They didn't have shoes in. They had sandals. 
okay? So you hear all this stuff and all this theology and all this malarkey, okay? But here's the thing. If they had the authority, they, they, they clearly didn't lack authority because Jesus had given them the authority to do it. What they lacked was faith in their authority. They lacked faith in their authority. They lacked trust in who's the authoritative figure? Jesus. They lacked trust in Jesus. You see, we have this mindset, I've got a headache. Oh, we can pray for that, okay? But let's say someone has cancer or someone has a, a you know, we, ha we, we put things on a scale of 1 to 10 of the severity of it, okay? Cancer would be way up there, you know? A headache would be just, you know, that's not too big. But, and then raising the dead, that would be way up there, you know? We, but we put, we put things on a scale, right? But to God, it's, it's nothing. It means nothing. He doesn't care if it's a headache, if it's cancer. He created the world. He created everything in it. The universe, everything in it. Do you think a headache is that big a deal to him? Do you think cancer is that big a deal to him? He nailed cancer to the cross. He, he, he nailed it to the cross. It's gone forever. Why do we get it? Why, okay, he didn't, now, he, just because I believe, it doesn't say that because you believe, you won't have these things, okay? Because he says we'll go through trials and temptations and we'll go through all this stuff. Life happens, right? But we don't have to put up with it, okay? That's where we have got the authority, okay? We also have the authority because he says, I've given you authority to trample on scorpions and snakes and all the power of the enemy, would you say that cancer or anything like that is power of the enemy? Yes. So you have authority over it. Okay? So, clearly you have the authority. We just lack the faith in the authority. We lack the trust that Jesus will actually do it. And, and it's, it's, it's very true. We all struggle with that. We all struggle with, yeah, I believe it. I, I believe. I believe. But do you really believe? You know, yeah, I believe, I believe, but is it heartfelt? The heartfelt prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The heartfelt, meaning, I know that I know. I know that I know. You ain't going to talk at me out of it, Jerry. I know that I know that I know. You know? It's like Jerry, when he gets to mowing, he knows that he knows that he knows. He's got a tournament at 4 o'clock, and he's got to get this baby mowed. <laughs> Got her, get her, zip down. Okay, so they didn't lack the authority. They lacked the faith in their authority. Mark 9.19. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Jesus said, come on, guys, bring him to me. I, I, this ain't no big deal. Have get serious about this, okay? Matthew 17, the story says it a little bit differently, but Matthew 17, 20, it says, he said to them, because of, of the littleness of your faith, that is your lack of firmly relying trust, for truly I say to you, if you have faith that is living like a grain of mustard seed, interesting that it says faith that is living, hmm, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place and it will, and it will move and nothing will be impossible to you. Message says it this way. It says, because you're not yet taking God seriously, said Jesus, the simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, I, I think that's, that's, I can relate to that. I can relate to that because you're not yet taking God serious. And I'm not trying to blame anybody for anything. Don't, don't get me wrong here, but I think that's just our natural being is that we, we in America, I'll never forget when we went to the Philippines, uh, the guy, Chris Ruby, he said to me, he said, he says, now where we're going, he says, they don't have doctors. They come to church. See, we as people go to the doctor first. And then if all else fails, then our last hope would be God. So where's our faith? 
Is our faith in the doctors or is our faith in God? Chris said this. He said to me, he said, Vic, he said, over there they believe this because he'd been over there before. He said, when God's all you got, God's all you need. And that's so true. I'm putting, I, Lord, and, and think about your situations. When you come to your end, your works, you're done. I'm done, Lord. I can't do it no more. You're at your end. When God's all you got, God's all you need. Now my grace can work for you. Amen? So, when God's all you got, God's all you need. Because you're not yet taking God seriously, said Jesus. The simple truth is that if you had a mere kernel of faith, a poppy seed, say you would tell this mountain move and it would move. There's nothing you wouldn't be able to tackle. So, what he's saying is, is that get serious about it because get heartfelt. But we have these limitations in our, we have these mindsets. We've been taught. We've all been taught in churches, different churches. And I was taught in a Lutheran church. I thank God for that Lutheran church because it planted a seed. But that Lutheran church taught law, okay? And most of you have been taught law all your life, okay? So when this new grace movement comes in, this whole thing about grace, it's totally different, totally whacked out. And it's kind of like, uh, I'm not sure I want to I don't know about that, that guy, okay? But when you start to understand grace and the different dispensations of grace, then it all becomes, makes sense. It starts to make sense. Like, oh, okay, that was for them. That was for the Jews. That wasn't for me, you know? You have to forgive to be forgiven, you know? The, otherwise, the Father in heaven won't forgive you. Well, that's, that was for them. That's not for me. In other words, I'm not saved. I have to do something. It depends upon me. That's works. And that's what they were under then was works, okay? Jesus forgave my sins, I thought. He did. Okay, so the, the, let, let's, if you're going to teach anybody, you meet anybody in the street, they say, where do I need to start this? Where do I need to start reading this Bible? Midway through Acts, about Acts 9. Okay, and start reading from there through uh, Filet Mignon. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Philemon. Okay? Filet Mignon. Okay, because that's, that is the part of grace. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Medium rare. <laughs> so start to have them start reading in that because that that will get their base. Otherwise, if you start having them read in in the Old Testament, that's what plants those seeds and those limitations. Because it demands it demands. Let them learn about grace, and then they can go back into that and go, oh, oh, I see the difference. You know, that's what needs to be. Okay, so. But our thinking is shaped by the po our, our possibilities of this world. With God, there's no limitations. In Job 42.2, it says this. It says, grace. Oh, there. No, it says, I'm convinced you can do anything and everything. Nothing and no one can upset your plans. Okay? Jeremiah 32.27 says this. It says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? How would you answer that? No. Absolutely not. Mark 10, 27. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible. See, that's where we come in for our limitations because we, we, we judge God on what we can do, not what he can do. Okay? So he looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. But we limit God through our thinking, through our beliefs, through the way that we were raised and, and brought up. And I bet I've probably gone over half an hour, haven't I? <laughs> okay. We'll call it good. We'll let you digest that morsel, those morsels for now. And then we'll pick up next week. Um, I thought I was going to get done about four weeks ago with this thing, but... It, I just keep putting more into it, more into it. So I don't, I, I won't never get done. I'm just going to say that right now. I'll never get done <laughs> until Jesus come, takes me home, takes us home. So anyway, I hope some of that made sense. That, that uh, Caesarea of Philippi really made sense to me because what, that really brought the speaking thing into reality. It's kind of like, oh. Okay, so now when I speak, you know, it's not me that creates. It's me speaking his word allows me to rest and lean on him. You see? 
So that's what Lord means. Lord means submission. You are my Lord. You know? So Lord means I'm submitting to you. Okay? So that we are doing. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for the offering we're about to take. And we just thank you for a, a great week. Lift up Jackie to you, Lord. I thank you that she is healed in Jesus' name. I thank you for Lucille, that cancer is gone in Jesus' name. I thank you that by your stripes she is healed. I thank you for Mindy, by your stripes she is healed. I thank you that her brain is being restored, refreshed, and renewed. I thank you, Father, that Sammy has a healthy baby in her. I thank you that everything that during the term of pregnancy everything will go well with her and that baby I thank you for that I thank you for each and every person and those that aren't here and everybody who believes said amen let's take the offering yeah